Hello, we're gonna pick back up into Psalm 1 and the, what we're going over today is full. It is so full and I am excited about sharing it with you and I know that Holy Spirit's gonna speak to you in it as well. So we're looking at Psalm 1 too and we've talked about the fact that what the law of the Lord is and it in comparison or not comparison but contradiction in contrast to um, the advice, plans, and purposes of the ungodly or the wicked, as the King James says. But we have the law of the Lord, His teachings, His precepts, instructions, and teachings. And that is where our delight and our desire should be, is in the precepts, instructions and teachings of the Lord, the law of the Lord. I want to look at today, and this verse is so full, we may get through it today, we may not, but it is 2 Timothy 3, 16. So if we're talking about the precepts, instructions, and teachings of God, of course, that's this, this right here, his living word to us, his teachings, precepts, and instructions are found in his word. So let's go to 2 Timothy 316 and it says every scripture is God breathed it's given by his inspiration and I uh, word association and go back to where do I where do I know where's a, a familiar passage where it talks about the breath of God God breathing um, of course this says every scripture is God breathed given by his inspiration but let's look at God breathed and that is back at Adam and Eve in the beginning in that when God breathed the breath of life into their nostrils they became living beings and so that way back in Genesis so we're at, when we were in 2 Timothy so let's go back to Genesis because that is such just a beautiful picture um, he said, let us, this is Genesis 2 verse 7, and it says, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life, and man became a living being. And so, I just love that, that breath of God that that life itself life itself and so his word is god breathed can you just think about that i'm, I'm going to take a stay long moment <laughs> as we're talking and just think about meditate on the fact that the word of god is life it's life to us well and that doesn't really come as a surprise we confirming scripture of that in proverbs um chapter four which you all know but it's it's always good to bring these pings together at the right time. But in Proverbs 4, we'll start in verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. It says, They are life. Life, they say. It says, those words, my words, he says, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, health and healing to all their flesh. So back in 2 Timothy verse 3, it says, every scripture is God-breathed. It is life given by his inspiration. It says, and it's profitable for instruction for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline in obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living and conformity to God's will in thought, purpose, and action, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. <laughs> Those two verses, and again, that is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, are full. And so we're going to start picking those apart tomorrow. But every scripture is God-breathed. It is life. It is living. And we can go into that. 
um, I believe it's in Hebrews 2, he says, For the word of God is living and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's Hebrews uh, 4.12. For the word of, that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. His word is alive and living and for you. It says it is life to those who find them. You know, and I, I love in tying all of that together to end the day. It says our delight and desire should be in the law of the Lord. And so our desire and our delight should be in life itself. Life, craving that life, that life that he has for us and his life um, in us, giving us strength, producing the fruits of the spirit. I could go on and on about that, but you have to do things and so do I. <laughs> so we don't have time today, but we will pick up again tomorrow and I will see you then. Bye y'all.